cerebral palsy. Now, when I found out what I had was cerebral palsy, my parents started to receive all of these phone calls from their friends saying, I'm so sorry to hear about Katrina, because I'd read in a paper that Star Nipola had cerebral palsy. And I think they were sorry because they really didn't understand what cerebral palsy was. Maybe their image of cerebral palsy was somebody in a wheelchair with really severe cerebral palsy who obviously couldn't walk. They might not even be able to talk or even feed for themselves. Or maybe the image of cerebral palsy was somebody like Steady Eddie, who you all probably can remember, the comedian who had cerebral palsy, really flexed up arm, really slow, slurged speech. In fact, there are many different types of cerebral palsy, and every day in Australia, one baby is born with cerebral palsy. And it's interesting when things happen to you in life, um, and often they say, you know, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of thoughts every day in our head, and only 1% of them are actually positive. The rest are negative, and it's interesting when things happen. You always think, oh, what about this? This is, what, how will people treat me? Will they accept me? Will I succeed? Will I fail? Will they reject me? And you're fighting with these negative thoughts all the time. But if you take the time to sit back and have a think about the situation, I believe that every situation happens for a reason. There's always a positive to be found. One thing I did learn, though, is because I had some talent and that if I worked hard, that could get me somewhere. And we've heard this morning from many speakers talking about working hard. If you want to achieve something, the lesson in it is that you stick to it, and if you work hard, you can achieve it. So with working hard, I was a good netballer and actually made it to the Australian Institute of Sport in 1995 on a netball scholarship, which was really exciting for me. I was living in Adelaide. I'd just finished year 12, got accepted to go live in Canberra for a year, move out of home. So I had to make some hard decisions, and I had to look at my life and say, well, what's priority for me now? What do I need to put energy into? What do I need to say no to? How can I give myself more time every day to get that process right? So I made some hard decisions and I really worked out what was important to me. The second thing I did, and you've heard it a couple of times today, is I actually surrounded myself with a really good team of people. I actually changed coaches, I changed training squads, I got a great nutritionist, I got a masseur, I got a personal trainer. That was my athletic team. Even though I'm an individual athlete, I have a good team of people around me. But I also had great friends. I had friends that were motivating, that were positive, that were challenging, that were interested in me, that knew that I was an athlete and that I couldn't go out or do something. They knew that because they knew that I had a goal of achieving. So I surrounded myself with great people, and that really has been the key to my success. I had a great team of people around me. You know, with journeys and um, with being successful, and learning about winning and learning about teams. Um, there's always some wonderful parts of it and then there's always some obstacles and challenges. And I tell you what, when you do become self-aware and you do you know, really appreciate who you are, you're like a living magnet and will invariably attract into your life people, situations and circumstances that are in harmony with how you are thinking and feeling. And it's definitely happened to me. I've attracted opportunities into my life, people, situations, circumstances that are in harmony with how I think and feel and what I put out there. Um, so a big challenge for you all. Um, you know, is there something that's holding you back to move up and to, pro to progress up as a leader? Ladies and gents, please thank Katrina Webb.